Hey, welcome, everybody. Um, this is the virtual meeting um, kickoff for um, Language Arts A Development Approach, and I'm glad to be joined by uh, Deshelle, Amanda, and Sherry, who have uh, graciously. Is this, I wonder if this is your kind of first netcast slash like podcast for everybody. Um, I find them to be very helpful, uh, especially with, with students, and especially with online teaching. Versus me just you know putting up a PowerPoint slide and. and you listening to a talking PowerPoint slide, which is the only thing worse than that is a, just a PowerPoint presentation. Um, so the goal today is, is really threefold. I want to walk through the syllabus first, um, then demonstrate a few of the tools, and then just answer any of the questions that people may have. Um, so with that being said, this is an online class. However, we only have three weeks to do it in. Um, I usually teach this in a 13-week online semester, so everything had to get really compressed. Then um, I wanted to, we have so many different learning pathways in the class, specifically those who are seeking certification and some people who are already certified teachers and working, and some people who aren't even in the field of education but just want to learn more about language arts development to support um, in the community or in you know the public health setting. So it was a wide range of activities for me to really bring together, and I'm hoping I, I did that well. So the first thing I'm going to do is share my screen. Um, so we can go through the course. You should see me disappear in a second. I'm hoping now everybody's looking at our class. Does that look right? Yes. Yeah. Perfect. So this is, you know, this is your starting page. And one of the things that we came across with on Wednesday night was a lot of people were like, oh my gosh, there's so many places for me to go. I, I don't know, you know, how do I navigate all this? And that's where we redeveloped that metaphor of um, the, looking at that metaphor of think of that place just as the library. You're not really doing any interacting there. You're going there. That's where that's where the materials are hosted. You find everything that you need to read. You find out what the tasks are assigned. But that's it. It's the library. Um, and the way it works, as I share it again, is it's organized into the five modules. Literacy and culture. Cracking the code, which is really phonemic awareness and phonics. Um, fun with words, our diagnostic spelling assessments, uh, vocabulary, orthography, um, and you know it, those things they start to link. I mean, there's you can, looking at student spelling is probably one of the best ways to identify you know where they need help in in um, their phonics, but it's also a great way to understand word meaning. So. We're gonna, you know, I kind of lump those together in fun with our words, and then we get into comprehension um, with text and meaning making, um, text-based discussions, comprehension strategy instruction, increasing knowledge, and we have some great readings there. And then finally, uh, web and literacy language, which I I have to finish building that page, but you know, have a couple days. Um, looking at how we read, write, and participate on the web, and when you click on the, um, I also added a link to the syllabus right here. So we can go through that really fast. Any questions so far on just how that page is set up from anyone? Nope. All right, thanks. Um, so when we look at the syllabus, it's, it's really designed to have those two tracks, the certifications and then those students are just in the graduate programs um, already certified. And I have all the readings listed there as well. Um, I do need to de delete this whole section on video podcasting, which means I have to change the number. Um, but there's each week you have a couple things to do. You have a blog that you're going to set up, and we're going to talk about how to set that up in a second. But you need to do two reflections for each module. It says it says weekly reading reflections. I'm going to change that to module. I really thought I had. I really planned this for a five week summer session, and then somebody emailed and said it's only three weeks. I was like, oh. I panicked. <laughs> Excuse well, me. Like, that means Should you be seeing your um, um, screen or oh. your... Oh, I'm on the wrong screen? What should we be seeing right now? You should be seeing the syllabus. Yeah, I'm not seeing the syllabus. All right, let me fix that. Thank you for catching that. 
Were, was anyone else? No, they I weren't. was, and then it switched. Okay. Um, so this, let me. So I'm not sure what's going to be my error here. Do you see the syllabus now? Yes. I, I don't. I see um, a cartoon of Greg. Is that you with the... Yeah. yeah. Um, how about Amanda and Deshel? Do you guys see the syllabus? Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it might just be the bandwidth on your end, Sherry, maybe with the thunderstorms rolling okay. through. Um, do you have the syllabus open so you can follow along? Okay, yes. Let me do Let's that. Let's that. get that open. Uh, I'm dropping a link in the little chat sidebar next to you too as well. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and if you can't get back to it, Sherry, just let me know and, and I'll try to I'll send it to you really fast. Okay. Um, so each week you're going to do. Um, Two, uh, two blog posts. Um, oh, looks like you're online because the third person just joined us, Sherry. Um, so what you need to do is just basically, I'm not giving you, telling you what you need to do. It's your space for writing, your reflection on the journal entry. My only, my only caveat is that I'm looking for some kind of analytical writing. Like it needs to be based on evidence from the text that we're reading. But it might be a quote that you take and turn into a poster. It might just literally be a summary of the article or an article analysis. It's up to you. We also have discussion directors each module and their job is to post, you know, two to three questions. I posted one already um, just now and you can, you know, basically answer those questions after you do some of the readings. I'll, I'll post another one, you know, probably in the next day or two and we'll figure out a way to keep track of those. I might just make a, a, a running record um, because I'm assuming people are going to be in different places all the time during the course. But really, that's just respond to the, the questions by, posted by your peers and then respond to them. I mean, it's how we communicate. You have to have an understanding of text and reading. It takes two things, text-based analysis and text-based talk. So our text-based talk is done through your blogging and the online discussions. Uh, Dr. McVeary, can I ask a question? Yes, ma'am. Um, so... It's, I mean, it's kind of personal. My, um, my name is under the literacy and culture section. Uh -huh. um, so does that mean I'm a discussion director for this section? Let me look at that really fast. Um, you're still looking at my screen. That's yeah. going to be for the podcast producings. So that's, oh. that will, oh. But that means you folks, if I do a podcast, you guys don't have any weeks assigned as discussion directors. Um, right. So, and I'm going to, Wendy's no longer here. So what I'll do is I posted one question, Amanda. Okay. Um, you can post another question or activity on one of the other readings or on any of the readings. Um, you know, looking at the looking at the three other readings or all the readings combined, um, just post a, a, a another question that can kind of serve as your chances discussion director. Okay. All right. And um, because I, I really, originally, I always like to model everything first um, yeah. or have you folks try it. But I think we're just going to have to jump in. But I did post a question. And it doesn't have to be a question. I mean, it can be, you know, like some kind of quick task or activity. You just don't want to, um, you don't want to give them a huge prompt because they already have the tasks to complete for, they already have their blogging. So we're really looking for, like, you know, a jumping off point to have a conversation. And we want it to be kind of a free-flowing conversation. So, but if you want it to be like, oh, find three videos that support, you know, this activity, or, you know, read one of your peers' blog posts and, and talk about it, something. So don't it, you can get creative and not just do questions only. But I'm absolutely okay with doing questions only when it's your turn to be discussion director. Does that does that help? And is, yeah, is there just a time frame I should have that in by, or is it just kind of well because you're the first possible. one? Because you're in the first one, um, sooner is better. But yeah. I, I think everybody is going to be over the next three weeks all over the yeah. the different modules. Um, just because I'm I'm 
guessing the workload to be two to four hours, about four to five days a week. I mean, when you think about, you know, you're getting three credits, it's, that's mathematically what it, it works out to be in terms of homework and class time. So so sooner the better just because it's module one and you're kind of the guinea pig. I, that, it was done by random, so uh, of course. So I, I do wish you luck. All right, I'm going to go back to the syllabus now. Um, then we, we, we talked about how you need both the text-based talk and text-based analysis. For our text-based talk, I mean, our text-based analysis, we're really going to use the annotation tools. And we're using a service called Hypothesis, which is an annotation layer for the web. Um, I'm going to skip over that now because I want to do a walkthrough of how that, how that tool works. Um, we tried it out last night, and if you look at, most of you have started annotating. It looked like Amanda before this meeting, you're even working a little bit. Yeah. Um, and I added a, a link to our stream. The key is when you're annotating, and I want to end up saying this, oops, um, I'll end up saying this later, is to add that, that tag edu573 to it. And let me add that line. And I'll walk through and do an example with everybody. And then each uh, module, there's a, some short like learning tasks for you to complete, and they're listed under each module. So are you guys, oops. Are you back looking at the, the class screen now? Yes. Yes. All right. So under each module, like for this first one, there's a series of tasks for you to do. So this one is, you know, just because there's a lot of different theory. Like, for these readings, don't feel like you have to understand every one, one of them. They are really to give you a little background. The first one you had to annotate, um, and it tells you to annotate that. But then down here, like these tasks, the second and third tasks, they, they rely on these tasks, but you don't have to have them, you know, like memorized per se. But you're going to make some kind of infographic, for example, looking at ways that we make meaning in and out of school. Like, how do kids' literacy practices look like in school? How do they look like out of school? And by infographic, I just mean a poster. Um, but there's some really cool free tools out there, and I'll do a tutorial probably in the next day or two, like on um, canvas.com and things like that. Then when we get into critical literacy, we're going to be using the Lego Gender Remixer. And you just have to make a... I'm not, I don't want to you know, be a spoiler and show you how it works. But you just have to, you know, use that tool and then just write about it. It could be just, it could be a blog post or it could be just a, um, a reflection on our class stream. And just and incorporate the text that we read into that. Yeah, yeah give, use that as your evidence, exactly. So, and that's really just for the first one. The first, the first module is so um, reading heavy just because you have to have that strong background first. And then the next module is really our phonemic awareness and phonics. Now, just as a as a quick roll call, are all three of you Masters Plus certification, or is anybody Masters only? I'm Masters only. You're Masters only? All right, so yeah. your tasks, for, everybody has the same tasks for the first module, but then starting in the second module, I mean, you've been teaching for a while. I'm, I'm not going to have you, um, you know, you're not preparing for the foundations test. Um, and you have a little bit more of a background. So here, this is where there's a common read. Oh, let me let me share my screen. Here, there's a common read that everybody does, and that's the one you read and annotate. Um, and then there's you know masters only and certifications. They have different reads, um, and it tells you exactly which chapter to read. And you notice, like I try to space it out. So your tasks this time aren't as labor-intensive as the first module. I really tried to balance out the, the workload. The only thing you have to do is create and share a poster of common phonics patterns. Um, those, you know, like an onset and rhymes, like a word families poster, or a poster of uh, different diphthongs and digraphs. It's completely up to you, you know, how in-depth you want to make that poster. You'll probably end up just going on, you know, Google Images and stealing somebody else's ideas. I'm okay with that. Um, just kind of tell me if you do steal your ideas, tell me where you stole them from. Um, we just, you know, fancy way of saying cite your work. Um, so that's that's how that those tasks are set up. And For that module, of, do we do all three tasks just to be sure? Yep. Uh, if you don't have to do all three tasks, if it's based on, if it's um, 
let me try to find an example. I think some of them might have different tasks for... Nope, that one has the same for everybody. And... Oh, I see, here's one, the fourth one, yeah. So this is the only time. It will be clearly indicated if there's a different task for um, depending on which path, learning pathway you're in. Okay. Right. So any questions on the syllabus? Oh, let me go back to the syllabus. Actually, I didn't finish going over that. All right, so we went over the assignments. Um, now, the final project, this is also different depending on which... Um, I can't see. I, I can only see the cartoon. Is that because... Did I drop off lines? Nope, I forgot to hit present to everyone. Oh. <laughs> now, can you see it? Mm-mm. I can. I can also. So I'll just wait. Maybe I have to... Or, or make sure if you have the syllabus open, you'll be, you'll be able to yeah, follow. Yeah, I have it. I have it. Um, so what you have now are the final projects. And if you're a Master's Plus certification, you're going to do a lesson plan portfolio. And I will provide you the template. And I will assess you using Domain 2 of the um, Southern Connecticut State University's student teaching rubric, which is great because it exposes you to the student teaching rubric that you are budged upon. Um, and I'll just be using the planning section of it. But you're going to be doing... Um, you know, a set of five lesson plans, one of phonemic awareness, phonics, vocabulary, the text-based activity, and a web literacy activity. So five lesson plans, that's, that's your final. If you're master's only, you're choosing two of these options below. The first one is to come up with a common core learning activity where you're going to really hone in on one of the instructional shifts um, called for in the Common Core State Standards. And you'll develop a, develop some lessons based on that. Option two is to develop a classroom website, um, and it has kind of the information, and I'll give you lots of examples. Option three is a digital literacies project, where you're you know like taking that a web when we get to web literacy, coming up with some kind of activity where the kids have to read, write, and participate on the web, um, and it has outcomes related not only to a to something in your language arts goals, like, but also to what I'm going to show you in our uh, web literacy map. Or finally, you could choose to make a flipped classroom videos. These are just, you know, think about your a mini lesson you would do on, say, summarizing or character analysis. And you would just make a 15-minute, some kind of video on character analysis, and that would be... So if you do two of those three projects, you would be able to... Um, that's that's your final for masters only, and I, I told everybody last night too. If there's a specific need you have in this class, and you want to propose your own final, your own out of those three projects, if you want to take one, if you're a masters only, and ask me if you can propose your own, I'm absolutely okay with developing a project just for you. Uh, one of the teachers last night was um was is currently working in a summer school and had to come up with some kind of last day activities or last week activities. And she's like, could I design and, and try something? I'm like, yeah, sure. So if your master's only and you have a very specific thing you want to take away or learn from this class, feel free to cut, talk to me and we can customize and design a project just for you. Um, and so I, so I just had to balance out my assignments a little bit more. All right. Um, so, and then here below, I kind of go through and just this. I mean, this is I. When it comes to online learning, I believe in duplicity. Duplicity, like putting the same information in so many different places. So, you can you'll get my dailyish kind of emails with this information. The tasks are listed on the modules and are listed in the syllabus. Um, and I've links to all of the readings. 
and the um, the discussion directors for that week. Now you can co-plan with your discussion directors if you want to reach out to them, um, and so you, or you guys can each you know go about it your own separate ways and just put three separate questions. But sometimes it's a lot better to kind of co-plan with your dis other fellow discussion directors, um, just because you mean you know it just helps out with time frames because you can all you know play off of each other. But other people just don't like working with others. So if you if, you, if that's your, your style and you just want to kind of take it on your own flow, just pose an activity or question yourself when you are a discussion director. And so that is pretty much the syllabus. Any questions on the course outline um, or the syllabus before we get into the techie stuff? So I just have a question. So sure. should we... Th that last page that you just showed us where it was kind of like a summary, it didn't have all the readings that was on the website, so which one are we following? I, like, they, on, on that. they do need a match, but follow the website most. That means I okay. just miss, I messed up. Do you, I mean, which one was missing? Or do you know where? Well, like on the first module, there's only one reading here, but on the website, there's like three. Yeah, well, there's, there's this one and the second one, and then the third one there. So there's one... Two, three. I must be missing one. No. Yeah. So I'll, I'll I'll go and try to find that that one. But it's just just go on the if we follow the website. That's, yeah, you'll be good. That, and okay. it's my fault. They they were supposed to match. I will I will rectify that. No problem. Okay. Um, any other questions about the syllabus or about the um, the way the class is set up? And there's no timelines, like we can just flow as... Yeah, I'm just going to have to, I will figure out when my grades are due, and the timeline to be done will be the day before those grades are due. <laughs> just so I, that will give you a couple extra days, and it also, but it also gives me a day to finish up the assessments. Okay. Um, because I like to do a lot of video-based assessment, like talk to you and meet with you folks and talk about your projects, um, and that takes some, some time and some scheduling issues. So I'll give you basically up to the day before my grades are due. To finish okay. out. That being said, it, you know the class works better um, when you try to stick to a flow. I should, I would try to shoot for, I would do the modules in order, and I would try to shoot for one and a half to two a week. I mean, you have to do, you have to do more than one a week um, because there's five modules in three weeks. So really try to think about doing one and a half to two a week. And you know, this week, if we follow that Wednesday to Wednesday schedule. Um, we're pretty far into this week, um, but I know most of you work, and if this is like any other online class, at Sunday night at like 9.30, that's when there's just a, a flood of activity. Um, so I, I do know that, and I try to adjust my schedule, and I'm around um, almost all the time. You can reach me. Um, I, you already found me on Twitter, so yeah. you asked the question there. You can, you know, hit me up on the, um, on the class stream or by email. The, the only time I'm really usually not around is between the hours of 5 to 8.30. That's usually when I'm dealing with the children and trying to get them to bed. Um, but other than that, I'm wide open for, for, for phone. For uh, I'll put my text messages back in there. You can text me. You can send me a tweet. You can send me an email. I just want to be available for you folks whenever. All right, so I want to get into the tech tools today. So quick question. Out of the three of you, how many have actually already set up a blog so far? I did. Amanda did. Has anybody ever blogged for another class or blog, just blogs as a teacher in general already? I blogged a while ago. You blogged a while ago. Well, it was funny last night, and I put this in the newsletter, today's newsletter, is one of the teachers was talking about, you know, the second grade teacher in my classroom, she blogs, and she's a parent favorite because they get to see all the kids' work, and the PTO loves giving her money because they can track what she's doing. And um, usually when I set up blogs for a classroom, they don't go past the class, but I really hope that they do for you folks. It's, it's one of the most reflective practices I have as a teacher where I'm thinking out loud. Like, I'm being very public about my successes and failures as I teach. Um, and that makes me a better teacher. And it also gives me a connection to my students. I get to show off their work. And, it, you know, it also helps build up my digital footprint and my, you know, identity as a professional. So I, I, I do encourage everyone to do the same um, for themselves. But setting up the blogs themselves, 
um, for Dechel and Sherry who haven't done it yet is really quite simple. There's, and I'm going to show a couple options right now. The first I'm going to show you is using the, the blogging platform that we're using for class right now. Um, so I'm going to share my screen again. And the stream for our classroom, which is built like right here, this is using a service called Known. Um, and if you wanted to just use that as your blogging platform, it's really simple to set up. You just, are you guys looking at my screen right now? And it, does it, you see this um, site that says Known Beta? Yes. Now, this is super simple to sign up for. You don't need to pay anything. It's free. I do use paid um, sites for my blogs, but just get started. You don't need to. So the first thing you do is just set up your site address. Give it your name. You might want to, you know, you don't want to write, you know, edu573 or something like that, because what if you do decide you want to blog past this classroom? So I might just call it. I'm still not even used to it yet. <laughs> nice. Um, and and then you know I can choose my username to be my name or um, you know my Twitter handle, which is my identity, pretty much all over the internet. And then I just have to put in an email address. I'm using my southern one because I already have one associated with this account, I think. And that's pretty much it. That's all you have to do to set up the site on um, Known. It's super simple. It's just going to take a little bit of load. And there, that's, I have a profile name. And I, you know, I'm not going to work on it right now. Um, just, but then I can hit save profile. I can add in a picture of myself at a later date, and I now have my own blog where I can put status updates, photos. I can do posts. I could, you know, do check-ins of, of where my location is. If I was on a cell phone, it would, you know, include my GPS data. I'm not going to do that. Probably would just be using posts or quick status updates, mainly just the posts. Um, but that's how you could set up a blog in two seconds on with Known. You could also use Blogger. Now, it, it might be a, a little bit harder to, um, for me to demonstrate this because I already have old blogs there. So after you went to blogger.com and signed in through a Google account, you can just hit, this is my very first blog, um, which I started Probably back in 2007, I was I was a little late to educational blogging. What happened was I got accepted to present at um, the NCTE conference in 2007 on a topic of blogging. I said, you know what, if I'm presenting on blogging, I better start blogging. Yeah. Um, so I set that up in 2007, and then a few years ago I moved to my uh, current blog, which is a self-hosted WordPress site. And that is located at, at just jgregorymcvary.com. So I, I bought my domain. I self-host with Reclaim Hosting. You know, I built it up over time. Um, I have lots of different stuff. But that's, that's where I wanted you to get long-term. For right now, we just got to have you start being a reflective practitioner through blogging. So on Blogger, once you set up, you just click on New Blog. You can title it. And pick your thing. Oh, somebody already has that one. And then just hit Create Blog. And boom, you're done. So. If you wanted to buy the domain, Google now tries to upsell you, it looks like. Um, and so I can then just from here, I can just hit new post and start writing a blogger. The final one I will demonstrate, and maybe I'll show you Tumblr too because that's super easy. Um, if you go to WordPress.com, I'm signed in, I think, already. Uh, yeah, I am. Um, but you can make, you can go here and make a site, 
and make a blog really fast. Um, I don't use this one as often, so I'm kind of floating around here myself. And then you can go to my blogs and click on register another blog. I this is you know so J Gregory J Greg McBerry com so I can just you know Doctor Max blog. And then they're trying to also have me register. If you want to have your own uh, your own web address, you can, but you in no way need to. And then you can, you know, if, if you if you want it to be private, um, you can select it to be private and just share that link with us so nobody else can find it. I do encourage you, I mean, you have a fundamental right to privacy as a student, but I do encourage you to try to think out in the open for a little bit. But if you do want to make it private, feel free to make any of these private. And then you can just hit the create the free blog. And you have one. The last tool, I hope we're realizing this is, is just Tumblr. And this is another one where I already have one, but if you click on sign up, you can just make a new one. And Tumblr looks just like with Known, except with Known's open source and um, a little bit more free. So that is how easy it is. I think I just set up like three or four blogs in like four minutes. Mm -hmm. um, so if you need any help, please just email me or ask. Um, but you can use any of those tools to set up a, uh, a blog. And it's really for you to be reflective and, and think about what we're learning over the next three weeks together. And then hopefully take it with you once the class is over. Um, any questions on blogging? Mm -mm. Now you said the blogging is just like a journal that we, is, is just like a journal, right? Yeah, it's a journal. Yeah. Uh -huh. You're doing, you know, you can get creative if you want. You can put in images and links. And, you know, I'm hoping you, you'll see your own growth as a writer over time. But that's really, you're doing, each module, you're doing two reflective posts on something that struck you in the readings. Mm -hmm. You might fundamentally disagree. It might be a quote that you lock on to. It might be something another, another one of your peers said about the readings. Um, I'm just looking for analytical writing based on the readings. Um, any other questions about the... Um, blogging portion of the class. Yeah. Right, well, the last portion is hypothesis. And if you give me a second, I'm going to actually delete my um, my tool so I can then go and reinstall it. All right, so we're going to be using a social annotation tool called hypothesis. And this is a fundamentally one of the most powerful new tools that I think has come out on the web. But it does, some of you might be just, how many of you might just want to just print out every one of the PDFs I sent and read on paper? <laughs> yep. um, and that, I'm okay with that. So if that, 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 that's really your style and you want to just submit like an outline, you can. But I do encourage you to at least try the social annotations once. Um, A, I've probably assigned hundreds of pages of paper, so... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> You'd be printing out a lot of stuff. Um, but I'm the same, like, I do love, like, I just ordered my first book in a long time, and I got to set, I'm like, I got to curl up on the couch, and, you know, it's still an academic book, but I'm like, the the feeling, the, the tactility of the paper does make a difference. And there is some research to support that reading on paper um, does have a little bit higher comprehension than simply um, scrolling. But I think when you mix in the ability to socially annotate, um, I would love to see that study. I don't think it exists yet. A comparison between um, paper-based annotations, no annotations, and social annotations, um, which would be an interesting study. But I do want to quickly demonstrate how this tool works, so I'm going to share my screen again. Good night, boys. Sorry about that. Um, Uh, good night. So if I go to the web hypothesis website, which is this hypothesis.is, 
and I'm on Chrome. That's the key. Like, we did find this a lot easier to just have Chrome as your browser, but I will show you if you're a Firefox user um, or a Safari user, I'll show you how to do that as well. Um, there might be an Internet Explorer user out there somewhere, but that will work as well, too. But it, I find it works best with Chrome in terms of ease. So I can just click on this Install button once I have Chrome. And if you don't have Chrome, just Google from any browser, download Chrome. And just I can click on Add to Chrome. And a little extension here pops up that I can then use. And I'm already signed in because I have an account. But if you don't have an account, you can just, you know, hit sign, um, create an account and over here. All right, but I already have an account, so I can sign in. Now, when I'm on the readings, which is awesome, which is really awesome, is So if I'm working on, say, the first reading, per se, once I click this button, it turns on the tool. And you can see what everybody else wrote and how they annotated. So here, this was Christine. She wrote one last night. And then there's a couple replies to her annotations. And you can actually look at those. So Amanda said, Amanda, you, you wrote back. Yeah. You know, great point. Um, and then I wrote back there to, to, to that. And so it's, and then, oh, this is a great one. You actually saw somebody put in, um, oh, a man again, uh, <laughs> put in a picture of a, of a rat pressing lever for food, and, and I replied that I thought that was a great thing. So it works really easily and really well. And you get the ability when you, when you, I'm just highlighting anything. I didn't actually know what I'm highlighting yet. You can highlight or annotate. And when you annotate, you get a couple options to sometimes when I'm doing live demos just because my bandwidth is so taken up. There we go. You can then um, add your discussion right here. And you can add in images. If you drop in an image, it just appears. If you, you know, you can put in um, lists, you can put in hyperlinks, you can put in block quotes. The important thing is to add the EDU 573 tag. And then you can just hit save. And that's it. That's all the annotation tool does. And then when you turn it off, it just goes off immediately. Now, what you could have done if you didn't have, if you don't use Chrome and you don't want to install it, you can just take the link to a reading. You can take the link to a reading and then drop it into the bar there. And that will turn it on, too. So that's the other way to turn on the annotation tool. And then you can annotate from there. OK. So I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing my screen. So questions on annotating? No. I'm actually, I, I really like it. I think I'm going to have my students use it. Oh, cool. That was really I've never heard of it before, but it, it's it's pretty new. It was um, uh, on Kickstarter maybe about a year ago, and it's it's an open source nonprofit tool. Um, so it's it's I was I was involved in other kind of annotations tools. You might want to check out Genius.com with your kids, or Lit Genius um, was formerly Rap Genius, but they've kind of expanded into news and into literature and poetry. Um, but it's yeah, it's a it's such a phenomenal tool. And then you can do things like what I did over here. If you go to our website, you'll now see a link that called annotations, and it will bring you right to our class stream. And it just lists everyone's annotations. Mm -hmm. um, and we, we talk often about, like, how do you assess closed reading? Well, you can't, there's no closed reading rubric. It's, you know, that's a, it's a way you get at understanding. But with a tool like, um, with an annotation tool where it's digitally based, you're basically creating a portfolio of students' understandings. So you can watch their reading skills kind of develop over time. Um, so I think, yeah, I think at, 
at, at a classroom level, it, it has a, a huge potential. Um, so are there other questions in terms of the course or the coursework or, or how everything? Do, do you guys have any questions for me that you want to bring up before we close out shop? I, I think that was very helpful. I'm glad I, I'm glad I came across this. Lucky me. Well, Sherry, let me ask, how did you come across, was it in your email or was it on our class website? Yeah, but I, I hadn't checked the, um, I just opened my email at 15 minutes earlier and started looking through things and um, because before that I had opened uh, the newsletter from the other day and said I got to start downloading these things and figuring this out and how am I going to make sense of this and because I could, I really, um, had wanted to go last night and I couldn't make it at the last minute and and was disappointed so I'm so glad that I'm here oh. now because now I feel like oh well, I can do this yeah it's really not that hard um, but I'm, I'm glad it did work out and I will send out those um, daily newsletters uh, daily-ish um, and they will include different tutorials or, or different you know meeting informations and they'll be posted on the class stream and you'll also get one email from me pretty much every day. And Sherry, if you have any questions, just, just go ahead and ask. Um, Amanda Deschel, do you guys have anything you need to add or questions? I don't think no. so. I think that covered everything. All right. Well, wonderful. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. And um, I look forward to talking to you folks in the next couple of weeks. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right, bye. Thank you.